Okay, so when I saw that underconsumption core had taken off as a trend, I was excited. I feel like anything that encourages people to bring fewer things into their house is a win for them. So I was like, yay, this is great. It has a lot of overlaps with minimalism. But what I didn't expect was to see such a strong backlash from people online. Like I saw a lot of videos where people were like, oh, this is just like normal life. Why are we talking about this? There were people who were like, hey, as a minimalist, I've been doing this for years. Like what, what's so new about it? Um, but if people are choosing to bring fewer things into their physical space, that's a win for them. So whether they're calling it under consumption core, minimalism, sustainable living, or like some secret fourth thing I don't know about, like that's good. I wanted to take a very positive, but like also comparative look at both minimalism and underconsumption. Cause like both practices are good if you're trying to be more mindful about your spending and consumption habits, but they're not the same. So let's start with minimalism. Minimalism has been around for a while. And I think that at this point, it's safe to say that it's not really a trend. It's a movement. And there are leaders like Marie Kondo, Joshua Fields Milborn and Ryan Nicodemus, Fumio Sasaki, Joshua Becker, Dana K. White, and others. And minimalism at its core is about having exactly what you need and nothing more. People often think that minimalism is about having fewer things, and that is usually how it works out. Minimalists can be really, really aggressive in the pursuit of getting rid of their earthly possessions, but at the end of the day, um, it's more about being free of the hold that those possessions have on you. Every minimalist has things that they need to live. And I think that that varies from minimalist to minimalist. For me, minimalism means having what I need to live comfortably and not having anything that I don't need. Um, for others, they just take a look at what they actually need to live and they try to live with as few things as possible. And both of those are very valid ways to approach minimalism because they have the same goal, right? Like, we are both trying to free ourselves from the hold that our possessions have on us. We are trying to you know, make less clutter in our spaces so that the visual clutter doesn't stress us out. We're trying to free ourselves of the time that it takes to maintain our possessions so that we can live lives that are happy and joy-filled and peaceful and have room for adventure and spontaneity because we are not so jam-packed into our spaces and into our lives that... We don't have time for the things that truly make life meaningful and beautiful, like simple human to human connection or, you know, exploring and wonder and inspiration. Like all of those things are important and they often get pushed aside in this reckless and relentless pursuit of more things. And so minimalism is a rejection of that. It's a rejection of the consumeristic lifestyle that many of us just fall into pretty naturally. Um, and it's a conscious choice to say like, okay, I am going to think about what I need to, to live and I am not going to be persuaded by all the shiny objects and advertising and marketing. I am going to simplify my life. The anti-consumeristic part is the part that overlaps the most with underconsumption, which we'll get to in a minute because minimalism has been around for a while. There's also a minimalist aesthetic. I don't think that anyone's ever called it minimalism core, but there is an aesthetic um, that's probably because it became popular like during the millennial age of the internet. Um, and the minimalist aesthetic has very clean lines, no clutter, obviously. And um, it's got like this very feng shui vibe, kind of minimal colors, um, very like natural tones, very relaxing. There's also um, like some Scandinavian influence as well. Like this cool book that I have that talks about like using warm tones and cold tones and is definitely like very minimalistic in vibe. Okay. So that's minimalism. Now under consumption, while I'm pretty sure it's existed for a very long time, um, has only recently become like a little bit of a trend of its own right. And at its heart under consumption is about not buying things that you don't need, making the things that you have already last longer and not spending too much on things. So it's not just about buying less, it's also about spending less. So as you can see, like buying less fits very well with minimalism. But I think that normally, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, but I think that normally the motivation for underconsumption is financial 
freedom, financial security. So like if you don't spend as much on your things, you're going to have more money. You can save it, you can invest it. And so um, under consumption is very much about like, we are going to take control of our finances. And part of that is that we're not going to splurge on things all the time or like always have to have the newest and greatest thing. So as you can see there, like they fit together, but not necessarily perfectly, right? Like you can be a minimalist and still spend money on the things that you truly need and spend quite a bit of money because you're like, this is the only, you know, kettle I'm ever going to buy. So I'm going to get the one that has all the fancy like features. Whereas under consumption is really about like spending less. So, um, you know, you can practice under consumption and still maybe not be a minimalist because, you know, you stock up on things when they're on sale. And so you've got like some clutter or um, you see a good deal and so you buy something at a thrift store even though it's maybe not something that you need. But most of the time, I feel like they do go hand in hand. One of the ways that I practice minimalism and bringing fewer things into my house is that I try to make very few spontaneous buying decisions. I do make some um, depending on the cost of the item and how small it is and how like attached I'm going to be to it. Um, but the decisions that I have regretted the most in things that I have purchased have been sort of spontaneous, spur of the moment decisions that I have made. And then I have felt like, oh man, like I spent the money on this. I guess I need to keep it around and see if I use it. Um, and that just is not very minimalist of me. And it's not something that you would do if you were committed to under consuming either. Like in both practices, I need to go, okay, like I want to get like a new tumbler, but I want to think about it. And make sure that I'm getting the right one because I can't just buy tumbler after tumbler after tumbler until I find the right one. I, I want to buy the correct one. I don't want to be hanging on to like a bunch of water bottles out of guilt because of the money that I spent on them. So here's how I see this. There's a big overlap between minimalism and underconsumption, and it is here. It's not bringing too many things into your space, not buying things just to buy them. And a rejection of the idea that you have to have the newest and shiniest things all the time in order to be seen as cool or successful, or there's like a sort of anti-consumer bent. But there are distinct differences. Underconsumption is about spending less and having more financial freedom, um, making do with what you have, you know, making things last. And then minimalism is about having less and having more mental space as a result and getting rid of the things that you don't need. So to live sustainably, I think that probably all of us need to embrace, um, buying less. So whether you call that under consumption, um, or minimalism, I think that's great. And you can practice one or you can practice the other, or you can practice both based on where you are in your life. And I think that's awesome. So if you are interested in learning more about minimalism and what it's taught me, you can check this video out. Um, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.